Fields Woodshop is sponsored by Minimax and by I Would Like. Check out their products at iwouldlike.com. Okay, so I was going through some of my timber which I was flattening uh, in with the intent to just sell it and make some uh, cash from it. But this piece really stood out to me. So it's got one uh, square edge and one live edge and it has a really nice bit of uh, figure throughout it. And the minute I saw this, I kind of thought this is gonna be a really nice, thick, rustic coffee table. So basically the idea is, is to cut this slab in half and then fold it around so these two square edges uh, be joined in the middle and be left with a nice wide tabletop. You can see there is a little bit of uh, edge uh, bark here or um, waning, I guess you would call it. So what I'm gonna do is get my track saw and just cut off this entire length so we've got a nice 90 degree edge, which is dead straight, before we cut it in half. The saw couldn't quite cut all the way through, so there's just a little bit left. So what I've got is my router set up with a pattern uh, flush trim bit. So I'm gonna flip the slab over, run this over uh, that, and just remove that little bit of excess. pretty much what we're going to be looking for. So this is the top of the table. Um, this, straight off the saw, it's not exactly a perfect joint. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna open them up so the faces are you know, touching each other and that way it doesn't matter if the angle's slightly off and run it over the jointer while these are clamped. where this method kind of proves itself, and that is even if this angle isn't 90 degrees, the fact that we had it face to face means that the angle will complement each other. So if this is uh, you know, 91 degrees, this would be 89 degrees, and it will still make it up perfectly and look seamless. So once there's a few clamps on that, I think we should be good. Okay, and for the glue up, I'm just using Type 1 2. I think it should be plenty strong for this. And the dominoes are really just there for alignment. <coughs> the amount of long grain to long grain we have here is gonna be plenty strong. Ideally, I would have clamps coming in both directions, but the thing is, because this is live edge, the reference point is always going to be on the bottom point of this slab, so regardless of where I put the clamps, um, the pressure is always going to be localised to the bottom half. So that's why it was important to have such a good um, glue line, otherwise it would be hard to close it up. But. Okay, so I let that dry overnight, took it out of the clamps and just sent it through the sand to level it all off and that is looking really nice. Now we've got a little bit of void filling to do here, so I want to fill this with a black epoxy so this crack is hidden and just stabilise the entire slab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up all these holes on this face and also the end grain and then we'll actually just fill it with a black epoxy, let that dry overnight and this top is pretty much done. I use the uh, West Systems epoxy just as it's what I use um, and the cool thing about this is it has these nozzles which mix it to the perfect ratio. Uh, as it is it's clear, slightly amber maybe, but I like to just add in a pigment and in this case I'm adding a bit of black so and the really weird thing about this pigment is just how thick it is, especially when it's cold like it is today. So I think we need quite a bit, so I'm going to go two pumps of each. And see how it looks from there, might add one more. So with epoxy, uh, as you mix it, you get quite a lot of bubbles in it. So there's a few ways to get rid of the bubbles. One is a pressure chamber, but no one has one of them. Uh, and I'm one of those people that don't have one. 
So the way I do it is actually just using a little bit of heat. So I go over it with a heat gun every couple of minutes and that just brings all of the bubbles up to the top and pops it and you get left with a really nice resin pour. And that's actually a trick that I was told by a props maker. Okay, so that resin pour has come up really nice. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna remove all of this. So ordinarily, uh, you would probably just sand it off, but I've got the big industrial sander, so I'm gonna send it through that again. And then we'll see if there's any other cracks and things that need voided, but this is a retro table. So small cracks and stuff don't bother me. It's only these big ones that went all the way through the board. So we'll I've had a few people ask what this machine is in previous videos and uh, it's been mistaken for a thicknesser a lot of times. What this is is actually an industrial wide belt sander. So uh, unlike your kind of drum sanders that you would see in smaller workshops, this uses a really big belt that goes over a drum, has a massive conveyor and there's two belts on this. So it can have a 40 grit on the front and 60 grit on the back and you can go all the way up to about 400 grit. Um, I got this for an absolute steal. I got this for $700. Uh, these actually retail for over 10 grand, so about $15,000 is your kind of standard level. So I got a really good deal on this. Um, I'm not entirely sure why the guy was selling it, but from all I can tell is that the relays in it, which switch it from star to delta, were a bit dodgy. So I've replaced them and this machine is perfect. Anyway, let's get onto it. has come up a real treat. No bubbles at all on the face side. And as you see, when you wet it, really nice in contrast. So uh, that's looking pretty good. We'll probably add a Dutchman here and here, uh, just to make sure that it has a little bit of extra strength. But really happy with, with the uh, way that's turned out. Okay, so there we have it, a really nice top. So that's come up a real treat. That glue line is pretty much invisible unless you know it's there. Our resin pour is really nice. And once this thing is sanded to a higher grit and has some oil applied to it to bring out that grain, it's gonna look superb. Now in part two, we're going to be tackling the base. So you can see that's just next to me here. Really simple design, just quite, um, it's just angular. So it looks a little bit more complex than it is, but it is very simple and it will really complement the overall look of this tabletop. At least I hope it does, cause that's the plan. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all of my weekly woodworking videos. And uh, make sure you click it so you don't miss out on the next part of this build. Now, if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and you would like to support me and help this thing grow, there's a few ways you can do it. Over on my website, you can head over to the plans page and download some plans and add a donation. So there's a Rubo workbench, there's a hand tool chest, there's a router table cabinet, the, there's quite a few little plans up there, so that's one way of doing it. Uh, if you're not interested in getting any plans, but you just wanna send a couple of bucks my way, uh, there is also a donation page, so you can donate a small dollar amount to a large dollar amount, and at this time of year, it would be greatly appreciated. So uh, if you didn't know already, George Woodshop is about to move to a much larger premises for the next five years, and uh, that is going to cost a fair bit of money. So anything that does come in is going directly into the move and getting the new workshop set up. So um, anything you can do is greatly appreciated. Obviously, I'm not telling you or asking you for it. It's just if you feel like it. Anyway, like always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, thanks.